Why hello lovely humans! Welcome to a special part two of Second Order Derivatives. So I heard a publication from the Pacific Northwest National Lab that fits perfectly with our exploration and understanding of second order derivatives and I wanted to use it as an opportunity for you to practice your calculus skills and your science skills. Yeah! All right, so uh, basically what the Pacific Northwest National Lab, or PNNL for short, found is that the uh, rate of change of global temperature is increasing. So it actually has the same form as this. Uh, so uh, global average temperature is going up like this, but it's not going up at a constant rate. Uh, the rate is, is accelerating. Um, and I couldn't find the actual equation, at least not a free version. Um, not trying to subscribe to journals right now. Um, and so what I was able to find on climate.gov is uh, the mean global average temperature anomaly. Quick note, I was like, why are they telling me the anomaly? Um, and it's because the sampling process for temperature is... Um, dependent on where you're taking the temperature, right? So if you're taking the temperature in the Arctic, it's going to be a lot different than if you're taking the temperature in Hawaii. And so by looking at anomalies, basically by taking um, the temperature of each location and then asking how much uh, was that an anomaly or like basically like here is the average of that location and uh, these are all the points that were either higher or lower, and then summing that up and doing some fancy math, um, you can get a much better picture of the Earth as a whole. Um, because there are a lot of different smaller climates and it can be hard to build up an understanding of what's happening on a global scale unless you do, um, unless you look at anomalies. So uh, I'm not going to dive too much into that. I could talk about that for like a half an hour. Um, but I did put a really, really helpful resource in the video description below. So check that out if you want to learn more about what a temperature anomaly is. It's basically a, um, a deviation from expected value. So for example, if in the summertime, the average temperature in Seattle was 75 degrees, but last summer it was 85 degrees, then the anomaly, an anomaly, <gasps> Cute. Anomaly would be 10 degrees. Um, okay, anyway, so this data set is from climate.gov. Uh, you can get it for free. It's literally just, uh, it brings you to a website that just has the data printed in a text format. So you copy and paste that into whatever your preferred uh, data analysis program is. Either Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets are a really simple way to do this. Um, and so what I did is I um, imported it into uh, Microsoft Excel because I wanted to use the linear regression tool. Um, I plotted the temperature, um, I'm going to say temperature because it's faster, but I do mean uh, mean global temperature anomaly um, over time. And then I used uh, the built-in regression tool. Basically what Microsoft Excel does is it takes all of your data points and it tries to approximate a best uh, curve fit to that. So just like we did um, in the first calculus video where we said, okay, we're starting at the origin and we know our ending point, I'm gonna assume a straight line. And so I can calculate a, um, a, an equation based on that data. So a straight line is pretty straightforward. Haha, <laughs> sorry for the terrible pun. Um, a data set like this is much more complicated um, there are some really effective tools, um, and this is part of the reason why climate scientists spend a lot of time studying what those different tools are and uh, figuring out which ones are the most accurate. So, um, <laughs> since the equation was not available, that's probably why you have to pay is because that's what all of those decades of learning the process gets you is the ability to use those tools in a very effective and efficient manner. So they want you to pay for that because uh, people deserve to be paid for their time. That's cool. Although I guess if you're paying for the journal, it's not going to the scientists. Eh, oh well. Anyway, that's a different conversation. 
Okay, so what I want you to notice is that the linear regression tool equation is up here. So I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. And clearly this is not a linear curve. Uh, if you were to try and plot a straight line on this, it would not look like your data set. So when you're trying to find a best fit line, you have to have the line actually fit the data. If the line is all like, Bleh, or if I had like a line going like that, you would know that that's not accurate. And we can't use that equation because it's not going to be able uh, to make predictions, let alone even tell us um, what our current data is saying. So one of the ways that you can test if your, if your um, equation is accurate is by plugging in data points to that line and making sure that it falls within uh, the uncertainty range. Okay, but what I want to point out is that um, the equation has the form at squared minus bt plus c, where a, b, and c are all constants. Um, and so I'm not going to focus so much on the value of those constants right now, but I am going to talk about what that means for the rate at which temperature is increasing across the world. Um, so in this case, I'll change P of T to haha, T of T, temperature over time. And so a, uh, an approximate uh, line could look something like this. Um, so this one, it actually, uh, in prior years, prior to 1960, it dips a bit below the origin, um, which is why you have that plus C, because that tells us our Y intercept value or the vertical axis intercept value. Um, and um, yeah, okay, anyway, I was like, I got sidetracked to looking at the pretty picture. So pretty was scary picture. Okay, so then we wanna ask, okay, well, how is temperature changing over time? Um, so I'm gonna call this T prime of T. Um, and the first derivative would be two AT minus B because we have negative B, um, B T term here. So that's our first derivative. And our second derivative, um, which tells us how fast uh, the uh, change in temperature is changing, AKA how fast is temperature change accelerating, um, is uh, 2A. And so that's really interesting to me because even though we have these extra terms over here, those actually go away in the second derivative. Um, and so we find that temperature um, is actually increasing and it's accelerating because this term is positive and so therefore uh, the temperature increase is accelerating over time. Um, so with a second order polynomial to represent the temperature, um, it says that the acceleration is constant. Um, a different polynomial might give you a different result, but all of the accurate polynomial fits to that curve are going to give you a positive increase in temperature. Um, change over time. There you go. I was like, it's critical to have those little words at the end. Okay, so what I want you to do is to repeat this process and then take the derivative to find how much is that acceleration. Um, so what you do is you go to climate.gov and I'll post all these links in the video description below. Go to climate.gov, uh, download that data set and import it into your favorite data analysis tool set. Uh, I would actually recommend Microsoft Excel because I tried to find the linear regression tool in Google Sheets and I couldn't, unfortunately. But you could also use Python and you can also use R. Those actually might be way more accurate because they are designed to do things like this. Whereas Excel and, and Google Sheets are for more like um, uh, simple data analysis, but it will work. Um, so you make a plot just like this. And then um, on the plot in Excel, you right click and you say add trend line. And then you can choose the form of the trend line and say show trend line on graph. And then you take this equation and you take the first derivative, 
to get the uh, change in temperature over time, and then you take the second derivative to get the change in the change of temperature over time, or the acceleration of temperature over time. Um, and so I'm curious to see what you get, and uh, you might try some different data sets uh, and see how those things change. So this is a really cool real world example of uh, second order derivatives and how we use them to understand the world around us. So um, just a quick note that this video is not, uh, we are not talking about the validity of climate change because it is happening. Um, the leading experts in climate science around the entire world all agree, it's like 99.9%, .9 and it, uh, whenever you have agreement that is that high, uh, it's happening. And so the question is not so much uh, what is happening, it's uh, what can we do about it. And the good news, let's start with that first, the good news is that we have the technology to mitigate climate change. We have renewable energy technology. We have efficient systems. The problem, and this is the bad news, I guess, is that we are not acting fast enough to protect ourselves uh, from the dangers of climate change. And honestly, one of the biggest dangers is that uh, sea level is rising and that affects all of us that live along the coast. So I'm in Seattle, a lot of folks um, in New York City and Florida, um, around the world, uh, most of us live along the coast. And so that is going to dramatically affect our lives um, unless we can act now. And so I challenge you as an individual uh, to really think about um, <laughs> how uh, we can change our daily lives and also how we can uh, demand large companies to act accordingly as well. Because if we're being honest here, the lifestyles of the average everyday person are not causing climate change. It's the, it's the, um, the lifestyles, I don't really want to say that, it's the way that companies run that is contributing the most to climate change. And so we need to demand that companies change their business practices so that we can all make sure that our planet is habitable for ourselves and other living creatures well in the future. I have a lot of hope in humanity because there is a lot of uh, kindness and love and there are a lot of really uh, wonderful people doing really good work. So I'm really hopeful, but we do have to act. So this is one way to understand the scope of the problem is through mathematics and through science so that we can make better, more informed decisions about ourselves and the world around us. Please let me know if you have any questions about this data set. Boop. Um, about uh, how you actually apply the second uh, order derivative to this data set. Uh, fortunately, it's almost the exact same as the example I ran through. You're taking the derivative with respect to time of um, a, a second order polynomial equation. So it's a really good way to practice your calculus in a, uh, like in a really uh, real world applicable problem. So yeah, and then of course, let me know if you have any math topics you would like me to cover. The last thing that I'll say is that I am not here to debate climate change, uh, and I request that all dialogue maintain respectful discourse. Thank you in advance. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye!